Hello everyone, today I'm going to share with you how I grew my zinnias in an old wheelbarrow using the Hugo culture technique. Are you ready to make it work? Welcome back. As I said earlier, I will be planting zinnias in this wheelbarrow and I will be using the Hugo culture technique. If you missed my video on Hugo culture, you can click on the card above here or you can watch it later after this video. I had a lot of organic waste in my garden, so I decided to make use of it. I took some and filled it about one third of this wheelbarrow. This is followed by some chopped up banana tree trunk, which I took from my neighbor's belt banana tree. I then added some dried leaves and finally top it with soil. I will be planting zinnias in this wheelbarrow and my plan is to plant as many flowers as possible in my garden to attract more pollinators such as birds, bees and butterflies. This motivation came about after learning about the importance of bees in pollinating our fruits and vegetables and also after discovering the absence of a specific bee which has led me to do manual pollination on my pumpkin plant. Bees population are decreasing in our environment and this has led to a decrease in fruit crops. If you are interested to know more about bee saving initiatives in Malaysia, do check out this Facebook group called My Bee Saviour. Links down in the description box. So here I have some grown zinnias. I'm going to collect the dried flowers because that's where the seeds are. One very interesting finding when I studied this flower is this, that they have two types of seeds. Seeds from the ray petals and seeds from the disc florets. Here, I am pulling off the ray petals and you can see the seeds forming at the base of the petals. You will also find some empty seed case as a result of felt pollination. And now I'm picking off the disc flowers. Here is how a seed that is attached to the disc floret look like. As for these, they are called chaffy scale. I also learned that apart from varying in colours, the layer of petals in zinnias varies too. Some zinnias have a single row of petals, some have numerous rows. Another type is somewhere between these two. From what I read, zinnias prefer to be sold directly into where they are growing and dislike being transplanted. But from my experience, I've transplanted them successfully many times when they are 1-2 to two weeks old. Plant zinnia seeds under 1 cm of soil and they will sprout between 4 to 7 days. Here are my three big old zinnias and I've arranged some branches around the wheelbarrow to prevent my chickens from destroying them. Close to a month and a half later, here is what they look like. And finally, two months later, here is the result. I learned that zinnias love full sun and it's not advisable to plant them under the shade or to plant them too close to each other. For them, the plants will develop a fungal disease called leaf spots. They cause affected leaves to form red-brown with white spots in the middle that often begins in the middle section of the plant and progress upwards so that the plant loses its attractiveness over time. This infection could be caused by the following High humidity, close plant spacing and overhead irrigation where the fungus is spread by water splashing from plant to plant. To prevent this, plant seeds from a disease-free plant. Plant them at least 6 inches apart to promote good air circulation. When watering, make sure you water at the base of the plant and not over the top of the plant. Weed out infected plants and destroy them. Do not add them into your compost pile. 
Another possible problem with zinnias is wrinkly leaves of young seedlings, and this is a sign of overwatering. If your soil remains wet even after 3 days of watering or rain, then the soil is too wet, so plant them in well-draining soil. Zinnias take about 2 months to grow and bloom from seed, and they give such lovely blooms. They are also perfect as cut flowers. I'm still working on planting a row of zinnias on my third mini Hugo culture bed and the journey has been very satisfying. One morning, I even saw a female olive back sunbird feeding on the nectar in my zinnias. I'm glad my plants are beautifying and feeding birds and insect pollinators at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this video and give it a go in planting zinnias. Join me in increasing the bee population in your area. If you learned something new in this video, please support me by clicking on the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.